a different world, which only the strongest endure. Life in Bilibid is very hard. Locked up and punished. Anyone screwing up ends up in solitary confinement. All this behind bars. Gangs. Violence. Drugs. Harassment. A daily survival of the fittest. In the toughest prisons in the world. Manila, the capital of the Philippines. A city of extremes. On the one hand, modern skyscrapers, luxurious shopping malls, and wealth. On the other hand, extreme poverty. One third of Manila's 13 million inhabitants live in slums, lives dominated by violence and crime. Huge quantities of cocaine and heroin are being constantly found in police raids. Fierce battles rage between gangs over these drugs. Anyone caught by the police ends up here, in new Bilibid prison, the main prison in the Philippines. Camp Sampaguita is part of a mega prison complex and is one of the toughest prisons in the world. It was designed to hold 1,500 offenders, but more than 8,000 are currently incarcerated here. That means up to 90 hardened criminals crammed into 25 square meter cells and catastrophic hygienic conditions. Every week, new inmates arrive, making the situation even worse. On arrival, the men go through a rigorous admissions procedure. First, they are searched by guards. I count the prisoners' money. They can only keep 2,000 pesos. I'm also looking for cigarettes and sharp or metal objects. The biggest threat is a new arrival smuggling weapons into the jail. At worst, these weapons could be used to incite riots. Next, prisoners are given numbers to replace their names. Their personalities are reduced to just a few digits. I need you to remember your prisoner number well. Okay, we carry out regular head counts. We need you to keep to the rules. Are we clear about the numbers? And are we clear about the rules? Don't forget, if you want an early release, stick to the rules. One of the new arrivals is 35-year-old Rondell. He has been convicted of attempted murder an unpremeditated act of jealousy. I have no idea what to expect now. I never thought I'd end up here. I'll try to make the best of it. Maybe I can go back to school here and then have more opportunities when I get out of prison. Guards assign the inmates to different wings. Camp Sampaguita Prison has a total of seven wings. Wings one and two hold prisoners convicted of robbery, rape, assault, or manslaughter. Wing four houses the prison students. They can study there undisturbed. 
Wing 6 is for those jailed for drug-related offenses. They should not be a bad influence on the others. Wings 5 and 7 are for older prisoners and foreigners. These wings have more space than the others. The prison also has an infirmary. solitary confinement, and a section housing inmates who work for the prison administration. It's the turn of new arrival Rondell. Under close guard, he enters the prison's interior. Guards assigned Rondell to wing one, the jail's most notorious wing. The most violent criminals are held here, with prison sentences of 15 to 20 years. I'm a little scared. I hope the others won't do anything to me. Rondell was living a normal life until two years ago. No gangs, no drugs. Then he got into a fight and almost killed a rival a rash act that changed his life completely. He now shares a cell with dangerous criminals, gang members, thugs, and thieves. Wing one is hopelessly overcrowded, like the rest of the jail. The overcrowding is due to an anti-drug campaign by former President Duarte, during his six years in office, the police arrested more than 350,000 people for drug offenses alone, resulting in prisons in the Philippines bursting at the seams. New arrival Rondell is assigned to cell 119 by the guards. The cell leader, also an inmate, welcomes him. This is your new inmate. Okay. Make sure he behaves. Okay. Okay. Cell 119 is also massively overcrowded. No one here likes having to share their space with one more person. The cell leader shows Rondell his bunk. As the new guy, he gets the worst spot in the cell, right next to the toilet. Every available space in the cell is used for sleeping, including the floor for many of the inmates. Despite night temperatures exceeding 30 degrees Celsius, there is just one fan for the whole cell. To live together under these conditions requires strict rules. The most important thing that you have to remember in here is that you cannot, cannot lose your temper and you must keep to the prison rules. Because if you actually end up getting into a quarrel with someone, you're going to get everyone around you into a lot of trouble. The guards punish any quarrels and fights among the prisoners extremely harshly. I'm glad and grateful that the cell leader has accepted me and given me somewhere to sleep. During his first night, Rondell will not leave his bunk. At night, when everyone is in the cell, there is simply no room for prisoners to move around. The cells are so full that some prisoners have to sleep outside in the yard. The next morning, the city is slowly coming to life. At the new Billy Bid prison, the day starts at six o'clock sharp with the morning head count. Now we count the inmates in each cell. 
One cell at a time. 25 cells spread over three floors. Each cell holds around 90 prisoners. To keep control despite the overcrowding, guards count the prisoners several times a day. During the head count, the guards also check that everything is in order in the cells. Whether there's a dispute or someone is sick, so far, everything looks good. The guards now check the cell of new arrival Rondell. Overcrowded cells have been a miserable daily reality for most inmates for years. And for Rondell, the situation is very stressful. I hardly slept at all last night. I couldn't stop thinking. I have no idea what to expect today. I'll try to get to know my fellow inmates. Everyone here is eyeing me suspiciously. After the morning headcount, Inmates stay within their wings. They can't yet go out into the prison's large inner yard, which at least offers a bit of open space. Breakfast is served at seven o'clock sharp. First, the old and higher ranking prisoners. New arrival Rondell has to wait and hope that there is still some left for him. His fellow inmates use the time to inform him about the prison rules. The most important thing is to obey the guards, follow the rules, and keep out of fights. If you don't cause problems for the guards, they'll leave you alone. And that makes life a lot easier. Finally, it's Rondell's turn. His first meal since entering the prison. It's rice soup. Meals are eaten in the cells because the prison doesn't have a canteen. The food is, uh, well, let's say it's okay. At least it fills my stomach a bit. But food is the least of Rondell's worries at the moment. I have no idea what will happen today. I'm keeping a low profile and doing everything they tell me. I don't want to get into any trouble. The worst thing is, I'm really missing my children. While the other inmates are killing time outdoors, Rondell shows us his cell. This is our toilet and bathroom. We only have water from buckets. There's a schedule for showering. It starts at 12 o'clock. No, um, at 1 o'clock. It's tough. Just one bathroom for 92 people. No running water, catastrophic hygienic conditions, just like in the rest of the cell. 
It's okay where I sleep, but it's really hot and humid in here. It's hard to cope with. It's so hot despite the fan. My pre-trial jail was different, far less harsh than here in Bilibid. And the rules were not so strict. There's no privacy. Nowhere to put your personal belongings at least not for most inmates. Those at the top get the luxury of a tiny cubicle. Our cell leader sleeps here. In there. A luxury that a new arrival like Rondell can only dream of. Despite the overcrowding, the situation in the prison is relatively manageable as long as the inmates remain in their wings. Until being let out into the yard. Between 8 o'clock in the morning and 3 p.m., prisoners are permitted to roam around the entire prison grounds. For the guards, it is the most dangerous part of the day. All 8,000 prisoners from the different wings come together. Tension is inevitable. To keep the situation under control, there is the Inmate Control Administration, ICA for short. Specially selected prisoners work as assistant guards. They can intervene at any time, also with force. They get privileges rather than money for their work. For example, their own accommodation. Video surveillance is also present throughout the yard. Rondell has an important appointment. The new arrivals are getting their prison clothes. Rondale Aldabe. One more signature, and Rondell is finally an inmate at New Billy Bid Prison. He now has to wear his T-shirt around the clock. Meanwhile, at the other end of the prison, lunch is being prepared for the 8,000 prisoners. Three meals per day are provided. Inmates do the cooking. Like in any prison, a job in the kitchen is extremely popular. We don't get any money, but that's actually okay. The work is a distraction, and we feel we are doing something useful by cooking for our fellow inmates. A kitchen job is only open to those who have passed a psychological test and who have not been in any kind of trouble in the prison. Guards keep a close eye on the inmates at all times. My main task is to stop arguments or fights between the inmates. It's really important with all the people working with sharp knives. The prisoners have knives, but the guards are unarmed. Their only option in an emergency is to raise the alarm by radio. Of course it's risky, especially as we don't carry weapons. Before each shift, I pray that nothing bad will happen. Officer DeMauro has been lucky so far, but it's not something he can ever be certain of. The prison serves up to four and a half tons of rice to the inmates every day. This sounds like a huge quantity, but it amounts to just 500 grams of rice per prisoner per day, plus some vegetables or fish. Just enough to survive, but too little to really fill a stomach. 
Those with enough money from relatives can buy extra food at the prison market. Almost everything is available here, from fresh fish and meat to soft ice cream. The stalls are run by inmates. They buy the goods from the prison management and then resell them for a profit. It's a system that mainly benefits the prison. It saves money on food and keeps inmates content. One of the traders is Ranilo, serving 16 years for possession of drugs. I began building a new life for myself here when I arrived in 2019. And that's when I asked the guard in charge for permission to have the stall. And he gave it to me. And I decided I was going to do it like this so I can cover my daily needs and not have to burden my family. Inmates also have to provide their own toothpaste, soap, and clothing. Those without money don't have it easy at new Billy Bid prison. Outside prison, I had a vegetable stall and a grocery store. I was always a good businessman. I would say I have a pretty good running business. On a regular day, I'll take in around 700 pesos, and I'll end up with 150 pesos profit left over. The equivalent of $2.60, enough to live a relatively good life in prison. New Billy Bid Prison, one of the toughest prisons in the world. The next head count is due. Inmates must return to their cells. If they're not there, they'll get into trouble. We report any violation of the rules. Another department will then decide on the punishment. Anyone regularly getting into trouble will end up in solitary confinement. Something everyone here fears. At 12 o'clock sharp, the last prisoner returns. The guards again count the prisoners. I close the cells after counting to keep better control of the situation. Lock up, however, is not until the evening. Each wing is staffed by just two guards per shift. Two guards for more than 2,000 prisoners. Head counts are the only way to keep things in check. If someone is missing, we will quickly notice it. We count the prisoners four times a day. At 6 a.m., 12 a.m., 4 p.m., and 9 p.m. The guards are unarmed during head counts, but they are not afraid. It's my job. Of course, there are risks. But I have to deal with them. And we have people watching out for us. Despite the staffing problems, a clever system of control is in place to prevent the prison from descending into chaos. Selected inmates working for the prison management ensure order and security prevail within the wings. In addition to the cell leaders, there are also the governors. As the governor, I'm responsible for security in this building, talking to people, 
making sure they behave. There is actually a chance for early release from this prison. That's why I keep telling them, reminding them to respect the rules and the guards. Governors are selected by the prison. Jimmy T. Puang used to be a police chief in a small municipality until he shot dead a colleague, allegedly in self-defense. He found being on the other side extremely difficult at first. Actually, I've come face to face here with some of the people that I put in jail back when I was chief of police. And honestly, at first, I feared for my life because I thought they could actually kill me. Many of the inmates are former gang members. They meet their arch enemies in jail and might even have to share a cell with them. The prison takes a hard line to prevent fights. Gang activities were quite common, but now gangs are strictly forbidden here. We've virtually wiped them all out. Gang leaders in this prison have also agreed to it. People must learn to coexist. They have learned to coexist, to get along with each other, just as they will have to do later, when they are free and living a normal life on the outside. Any gang activity is punished. Any gang tattoos are made unrecognizable by the prison management. It's a measure that is having a positive impact. Disputes and fights are rare here. The guards are still doing the head count. They carefully count everyone in each cell. After all, the worst criminals are being held here. I checked all the cells. The numbers are correct. All inmates are present. Nobody's missing. There's one thing the guards fear the most, that one of the inmates will actually manage to escape. To ensure that this does not happen, a six-meter-high double fence made of barbed wire surrounds the prison. Getting through it is virtually impossible. Ten watchtowers also surround the prison complex. They give guards a view of every meter of the fence. High voltage current ensures that no one climbs over the fence. Even slight contact will be sufficient to immobilize or even kill a person. And I have strict orders to shoot any prisoner attempting to escape. Some have tried, but so far, no one has managed to escape from this prison. Heavily armed security guards at the entrance ensure that nothing can be smuggled into the prison. At the beginning of a shift, the guards search each other. Everyone is banned from carrying cell phones, cash, or cigarettes. Despite all the checks, as in any prison, inmates still find ways to smuggle in forbidden items. So cell raids take place daily. Today, we're searching wing 4A. Your job is to secure the building and make sure no one can attack us. Guard the doors so no one can enter or leave the cells. Understood? OK, let's go. Prison management determines when and where a raid will take place. Even the guards don't know beforehand which wing they will be searching. Inmates won't get any opportunity to quickly stash things away.
ECAs also assist guards here. First, they clear the cell block. Every inmate is thoroughly searched. No one can sneak out drugs or weapons. Cell leader, you stay here to witness the search. No one can then later claim that something was planted on them. The guards are looking for drugs, cell phones, cigarettes, and self-made weapons. We check every inch. The wall, here, here. We search the cupboards and under the beds. And we check for anything inside the pillowcases or in their bedding. They often try to hide stuff in it. The search is thorough. The Ika, in particular, know no mercy. If they miss anything, they could lose their jobs and all their privileges. All right, we're done. We found nothing prohibited, nothing illegal. This wing is clean, very good. Come on, everybody out. Nothing was found today. But the ransacked cells clearly demonstrate to inmates who is in charge in this prison. Whoever violates the prison rules will eventually end up here, in solitary confinement, known as Bartolina a sparse cell with no bed or television. Minimum stay, four weeks. Kimberly, who is half American, has even been here for half a year, ostensibly for his own protection. He got into fights with several other inmates. It's really hard because you have no visitations. All of your privileges, they will gonna remove it from you. They are all walking around, they are playing basketball. I get jealous because I'm, I'm an athlete, supposed to play with them, but the thing is, I'm not allowed. <laughs> Kimberly has spent the past six months watching the others from afar, but at least he is sharing the sparse cell with two other inmates at the moment. The first time that i been here, uh, it's really hard for me, especially I'm alone here that time. I'm, getting into crazy. Yeah, I'm talking to myself that time because I'm alone. I've been six months here. So that six months, maybe it's enough for me to, you know, to go out. <clears throat> it remains uncertain when Kimberly will be allowed back in the regular wing. One thing is for sure, he will do everything he can to never end up here again. To avoid getting into such a situation in the first place, new arrival Rondell stays in his cell during yard time and starts making friends. One thing unites almost everyone in here. The worst thing is being away from my family. I'm worried about my children. They're suffering because I'm here. Yes, and there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. Then it's time for cell chores. As a new arrival, Rondell has to do the most unpleasant and strenuous tasks. We need to get water for the entire cell. They're going to the water filling station on the other side of the yard. 
We have to line up. Over there. Does it cost anything? No, the water's free. But we have to get water for everyone. From now on, you're going to have to do that every day. The prison was first opened in 1940 and has never really been modernized since. The few water pipes to the cells are half gone and the water contaminated with germs. Rondell will now have to carry 100 liters of water from the water station to the cell every day until the next new arrival comes. Fortunately, my friend is helping me carry the water back to the cell. Daytime at New Billy Bid Prison is coming to an end. This means that prisoners will soon be crammed together again into a very small space. At night, everyone is locked in their cells. For many, this is psychologically very stressful. It's therefore another critical moment for the guards, who are now at least armed with a baton. I lock the cells at six o'clock sharp. Inmates with jobs also have to be in their cells by then. For the inmates, the worst part of the day now begins. They will spend the next 12 hours in cramped conditions in their cells. It is virtually impossible to move around. No distractions. They're alone with their thoughts, concerns, and fears. New arrival Rondell is learning the hard way. Life in here is really tough. Things that are easy to do on the outside suddenly become impossible here. And it's so crowded. Many here are lonely. They come from far away parts of the Philippines and never get visitors. It's not easy. Trader Ranilo has at least a little privacy. He's only been here three years, but he still has the luxury of his own cubicle. He worked hard to earn it. I ended up getting this cubicle to myself because I worked for the occupant who lived here before. Among other things, I did his laundry for months. Their cubicle measures just a tiny one and a half square meters but it provides a space for peace and his personal things. I have a wife and three daughters on the outside. They are standing with me. I really miss them and I pray to God that I can be with them again soon. In the Philippines, Families are very important. Ranilo's most valuable possession are the photos of his children. I look at their pictures whenever I'm missing them a whole lot. He also gets comfort from his cats. They are a kind of substitute family. Her name is Christine. <laughs> This one is Alas, and this one is Sedos. It's now nine o'clock in the evening. Time for the evening head count. Although the inmates are locked up, the guards again count the prisoners in their cells. 
Ito po yung pinakahuli namin bilang. Now we're doing the last count of the day. Bilang para masigurado ng mga tao na sa. To make sure no one's missing. Ito po yung schedule ng bilang namin. Darkness increases the risk of escape. The guards are therefore especially alert. After the head count, it's lights out. The TV has to be switched off. It's the only thing distracting the inmates at least a little from their situation. Packed tightly together, they get ready for the long night ahead. Many suffer from nightmares. Then the only light in the cell goes out. Only after the guards have closed the gate and the last inmates lie down to sleep. The cells are so crowded that some inmates have to sleep outside. A privilege given the circumstances. A privilege only granted to the elderly and the sick. One last security check in the yard. Then, we've finished our rounds now. Now we can take a break. The midnight rounds will be done by other colleagues. It's time for us to rest. Guards at New Billy Bid Prison work two days on, two days off. Breaks are taken in a separate area inside the prison. The office also serves as a dormitory. For guard Kabili, it remains his dream job. At first, I found the job really hard, but I've gotten used to it now. I provide security. That's what I like about being a guard. While guard Kabili and his colleagues are taking their break, the Ikas ensure peace and quiet is maintained throughout the prison. They patrol the wings around the clock. Most of the prisoners are now sleeping. Except for Rondell. He has another very special job to do. A job that every new arrival has to take on for the first few months. My task is to be the watcher. I watch the others sleep and wake them when they have nightmares. Some have bad nightmares. I then wake them so that nothing happens and they don't hurt anyone. I do this for a few hours, then somebody else takes over and I can finally get some sleep. A couple of days later, it's visiting day at New Billy Bid Prison. Prisoners are allowed visitors once a week. It's a day that most await eagerly.
Rondell is getting a visit from his youngest sister today. Usana. How are you? May May couldn't come with me. Her father had been really ill and has now died. That's terrible. How is she? Rondell has not seen his sister since his arrest two years ago. The pre-trial prison was too far away, and the trip was too expensive for his sister. I'm very happy. I was feeling lonely, but not anymore. Knowing someone is out there waiting for me and thinking about me keeps me motivated and gives me hope. I'm missing my family so much. I would be even happier if my children could come, but that's not allowed. They have just one hour. Then, visiting time is over. I'm glad he's okay and hope he gets out soon. Saying goodbye is difficult for both of them. Rondell will be alone again, far away from his family. Until the next visit, he'll have to cope with his situation by himself. The crowded dorms, the tasks a new arrival has to do, and the uncertain future. It's been okay so far. I stay in the cell a lot and only talk to people who talk to me first. I don't want any trouble with other inmates or guards. If I don't leave my cell, I won't get into fights. I want to get out of here as soon as possible and get back to my kids and my family. But a lot of time will pass before then. Time in which he wouldn't dare do anything wrong. Ranillo has at least 10 years ahead of him. It's a long time in one of the world's toughest prisons. different world with its own rules. When walking through a group of inmates, it could be a knife in the back or a blow to the head any time. Their life is in somebody else's hands. There are people here serving time for triple, quadruple, quintuple murder. That's how it is. You need to be aware of that. All this behind bars. Gangs. Violence. Drugs. Harassment. A daily struggle for survival in the toughest prisons in the world. Zagreb, a city with nearly one million inhabitants. It's not only the nation's capital, but also the largest city in Croatia. The country is still struggling with the consequences of various economic crises from past decades. One-fifth of the citizens live on the edge of poverty. The fate of many ends in crime. The most common crimes, murder, burglary, assault. 
Those who get caught end up here sooner or later, in the small town of Lepoglava, 73 kilometers north of Zagreb. Less than 7,000 people live in Lepoglava, and yet, this small town is known throughout the country. The country's most dangerous criminals live in Lepoglava prison, in an area of over 47,000 square meters. The former monastery was transformed into today's prison in 1854. Anyone who is incarcerated here will not see freedom anytime soon. Seven o'clock in the morning marks the beginning of the shift for senior police officer Shelko Krishta. He has been working at Lepoglava prison for 21 years. In the prison itself, we don't carry weapons. We have a nightstick, handcuffs, and pepper spray. In critical situations, we use a taser. It fires an electric shock that incapacitates the inmate. Firearms are prohibited inside the prison. The danger of an inmate seizing them by force is just too great. Cell phones and keys must also remain outside. Everyone who enters the prison has to go through the metal detector. That applies to police officers too. Everyone has to be clean. No prohibited items are allowed inside. In the past, police officers smuggled in cell phones, drugs, and pornography for inmates. The present day tight security makes that difficult. The prison in Lepoglava is over 47,000 square meters in size and is surrounded by an outer prison wall. It is almost 10 meters high. An interior prison wall seals off the main part of the prison grounds. The main building is in the shape of a star. A watchtower overlooks the three main wings. In the first wing are the solitary and padded cells. Then comes the high security section and the closed enforcement area. The main building also includes a kitchen with a dining area, as well as a training area. Everything is well controlled by guards within the interior prison wall. More than 200 police officers maintain law and order in Croatia's oldest prison. They monitor the country's 500 most dangerous criminals 24 hours a day and are prepared for anything and everything. The officers know almost all the inmates and their backgrounds. For 12 years, these steel bars have also been the involuntary home of inmate De Jan. Today is a special day for him. Hey, good morning. Oh, happy birthday. I need to go to work. See you later. See ya. So on the one hand, I want to say, I'm happy that it's my birthday. 
But I have to be honest and say that I'm very sad because I can't celebrate it with my family. It's mixed feelings all around. It's my 33rd birthday, and I miss my family a ton. Dejan's family supports him as much as they can. They send him money and try to visit him regularly. The birthday boy recalls his crime 12 years ago very clearly. I was addicted to gambling. When I committed the crime, I was 21 years old. I was not aware at the time that I was addicted to gambling. I had big losses. Then, I borrowed money from my cousin, but I couldn't pay it back, and he eventually pressured me. I just couldn't come up with the money. I thought there was only one way I could solve this problem, but it quickly turned out to be the worst decision of my life. The situation ended tragically. Dejan pulled a knife and killed his cousin. Ten minutes later, he was arrested by the police. The worst thing of all is that it destroyed two families at once. I am very sorry, and I will carry the guilt with me for the rest of my life. Dejan is now serving his sentence in Croatia's toughest prison, and he's doing it on 10 square meters. At least, he only has to share his cell with one other inmate. The two even have their own toilet. Not everyone in Lepoglava enjoys this luxury. The average sentence for prisoners who end up here is 20 years. Many are serving sentences of 40 to 50 years. The youngest inmate is in his early 20s, the oldest over 80. The prison in Lepoglava operates on a carrot and stick basis. It rewards good behavior. Inmates are allowed to move freely within their wing and at certain times go to work. Some are even allowed a TV in their cell. Those who do not follow the rules are punished. Unruly prisoners lose all rights and end up in solitary confinement. It can take years before they regain their former freedoms. Until the Second World War, the watchtower played an important role. Today, for humanitarian reasons, it is no longer in use. The guards now watch each tract from the various platforms. A guard stands watch at the top, armed with a machine gun. If occupants cause problems, he fires. Due to the 360-degree rotation of the gun, he rarely misses his target. Today, the prison relies on a combination of state-of-the-art technology and professionally trained police officers. Permanent surveillance, rapid communication among officers, and extensive checks make Lepoglava the most tightly supervised prison in the country. Dejan has experienced the harshness of the reward and punishment system firsthand. The story goes that I'd been in prison for 10 years. At that point, I'd been completely fine. I wasn't causing any problems at all. My roommate and I at the time smuggled in a cell phone, and that cost me my good 10 years. I lost 
everything, my clothes, my job, and I ended up in solitary confinement. They punished me pretty severely. I was locked up there for 121 days. That was the worst time of my entire life. It took a year before the prison granted Dayan the right to work again, to regain some liberty and get a double cell. Anyone who doesn't play by the rules ends up in the wing with the solitary and padded cells. It is the most dangerous wing in the entire prison. Inmates are completely isolated. Guards monitor their every movement. Staying here is absolute punishment. A newcomer is arriving. Do you have room? Yes. In which cell? Three and five. Yes, that'll work. What do you think? Okay. Inmates live here on eight square meters. The bed, table, and chair are bolted to the floor. Their only privacy is when sitting on the toilet. Contact outside the solitary cell is impossible. Before a detainee comes here, he's thoroughly checked. He has no chance of smuggling in prohibited items or substances. We make sure of that. He's highly isolated. He also has no way to get illegal items from here. If an inmate continues to create problems, he is moved into an adjacent padded cell. He stays there for up to two days, tied up and dressed only in his underwear. Anyone who rebels and soils the cell with feces, for example, is put on cleaning duty. These holes are the only source of fresh air. Inmates desperately try to get out of here. Anything except romance can happen here. It's serious business when someone ends up here. They try to manipulate officers or hurt themselves to get out. We don't pay attention to any of that. Word has spread about the horrors of the padded cell. Anyone who has been in there once, usually, does not end up there a second time. Those in solitary confinement or in the padded cell lose the right to work and thus the chance to earn money. The prison offers various workplaces, the metal workshop, the carpentry shop, and the kitchen. At every workplace, police officers, civilian workers, and surveillance cameras monitor the situation. Doctors regularly examine the inmates. Only those who are deemed safe are allowed to continue working and operate the large machines. The best paid job is in the kitchen. 120 euros are paid here per month. The work is almost daily. Forty-eight-year-old German Croat Ignaz has been working as a kitchen assistant for a long time. This reminds me of the Rhine Fun Fair. We used to eat this kind of fish there. His last visit to the fair was a while ago. Ignaz has spent a total of 17 years in German and Croatian prisons. If I had reacted just a little bit differently, I wouldn't have landed here. But with alcohol, it happens really fast. 
From one second to the next, you've ruined your life. Ignaz is currently serving a four-year sentence for aggravated assault. In Lepoglava, he is trying to improve himself. So, he is allowed to work in the kitchen. Yeah. Ignaz, come here, could you? Ignaz has another privilege. He is permitted to handle sharp knives. That means he has access to potentially dangerous objects almost every day. Only inmates who behave well and don't cause trouble are allowed to work with the knives. As soon as there's a problem, they're kicked out of the kitchen. Ignas adheres strictly to this rule. In a few months, he will be released from prison. For him, this is joyful news. But at the same time, it also means great danger for him. There are a lot of guys here who still have 30, 40 years ahead of them. It's clear that we don't have anything in common. Obviously, I'm happy I'm going home. Don't tell someone with 40 years to go that you're going home. He may flip out one day. I don't know. He may say to himself, you won't be going anywhere. That's very dangerous. It's not a perfect world. There are plenty of dangerous situations. Ignaz prepares meals for himself and his fellow inmates three times a day. As soon as a knife is missing, an alarm is sounded, and everyone must follow a strict protocol. We seal off the whole kitchen. No one's allowed out, not until the knife has reappeared. No one leaves the kitchen if even one knife is missing. A lockdown like this can last several hours. Three o'clock in the afternoon means the end of the shift for the nearly 200 inmates from the metal workshop. Strict controls are in store here too. Nothing is allowed to leave the workshop and move beyond the inner prison wall. For the guards, this control represents an enormous security risk. They are vastly outnumbered. There has to be order here, because if not, all chaos may break out. At no other time are there more prisoners in one and the same place. Prisoners range from petty criminals and drug dealers to serial killers and gang members. Every day you come into a group of inmates and you don't know what to expect. They all tick differently. You never know what's going to happen, whether you're going to get a knife in the back or a blow to the head. The guards are on high alert. Time and again, confrontations erupt between prisoners and police officers. In the kitchen, Ignaz doesn't notice any of this excitement. He's busy preparing the food for his fellow inmates. There is a meat, fish, and vegetarian dish daily. Almost everything is grown and cultivated at the prison. The prison believes that a full stomach will prevent riots. There's another precaution. Inmates do not eat with knives and forks. They are only allowed a spoon. 
Nema druge mogućnosti. It's sad, but there is no other way. This is the toughest prison in Croatia. Here you only eat with a spoon. We eat everything with it, including meat. If an inmate is missing teeth, then he has a problem. It's just one of the many difficulties faced by inmates in Croatia's oldest and toughest prison. Those who conform and behave well are allowed to decide how they spend their afternoon. Prisoners are allowed in the yard for two hours per day, except for those confined to the solitary and padded cells. Some pulled out in their own cell or in a recreation room. And here, too, there are strict rules. All card games are forbidden. So is all betting. As in the outside world, money rules in Lepoglava prison. There's a kiosk where you can buy almost anything, from fruit to cigarettes and sweets. How you doing? Three ice creams, please. Inmates are allowed to have as much money as they want, but they're only allowed to spend just under 27 euros a day. 30% of an inmate's monthly salary ends up in a second account. He gets the money as soon as he is released. My family supports me financially. If I didn't have their help, it would be a lot harder for me. If someone doesn't get the support, then the only source of financial income left for him is a job in here. And from that, he has to pay for items from the kiosk and the telephone. If someone has neither financial assistance or a job, then he has a really big problem. Today is Dejan's 33rd birthday. I want to invite my colleagues for a little something to celebrate. I think that's a nice idea. Despite the smallish celebration, Dejan does not forget where he is. I have 18 birthdays to go here, but I am hoping it'll end up being fewer. And to do that, he does one thing above all else, abide by the prison's strict rules. <laughs> Some inmates see it quite differently. For them, Croatia's toughest prison is more of a joke. The list of violations committed by 26-year-old Duya and 25-year-old Ravi is long. The truth? A little bit of kidnapping? <laughs> Contract killings? <laughs> a little bit of everything. Drugs, all of it. He was convicted of seven crimes. I was convicted of four. He's doing time for kidnapping, extortion, stuff like that. I'm doing time for aggravated attempted murder, kidnapping, extortion, attempted extortion. He got 11 years, I got seven. We just train here. Time goes by faster that way. Work, sell, exercise, that's all. Time passes faster that way. For both, it is not their first prison sentence. 
it would appear they are not exactly learning from their mistakes. Instead, they prefer to put their faith in the mercy of God. One has nothing to do with the other. God forgives. He forgives all our sins. We're in church every week for that reason. At Croatia's oldest and harshest prison, that doesn't really matter. Everyone is equal before the law. Forty-eight-year-old Ignaz knows the sayings of the young inmates all too well. That's the way I thought when I was a teenager. My first juvenile sentence got me six months. I thought, oh, it's a pipsqueak. I don't mind that at all. Then comes the next sentence, and the next sentence, and the next. Then at some point you say to yourself, you've spent a good third of your life in prison. All the good years you could have had are gone. They're gone, and you're not going to get them back. Today, Ignaz prefers to concentrate on his family. Family is important. If you don't have a family, you go crazy here. It's a disturbing feeling that I hurt all these people in some way, because they're waiting. They are being punished, just like I am. My kids, they never get to see me. And I miss them too, as long as I'm here. It hurts knowing that it's my fault that my kids are now walking around the world by themselves. It hurts a lot. In a few months, the German Croat will be able to hold his children in his arms again. In prison, joy and sorrow are only a few meters apart. Through regular cell searches, the officers maintain control over the inmates. And one of them is in danger of losing all his privileges. We've got info that there may be illegal substances in this cell. We're going to check the detainee and his personal belongings. Do you have any unauthorized items in your cell? No. OK, you'll be present during the search so you can see what we're doing. Stand outside by the door. OK. The searches take place unannounced and at any time of the day or night. The officers sometimes even frisk one and the same detainee several times a day. They check the room in a clockwise direction. Drugs and weapons are in focus, as well as sharp and pointed objects. Within seconds, these can pose a potential danger. It's not the first time they've come to me. What am I supposed to do about it? If I resist, five or six of them come and tie me up and then search the room. I can't do anything. This is their house and they make the rules. Privacy is non-existent here. In some prisoners hide pills or uh, even small technical devices like mini cell phones in their orifices. If we have such a suspicion, we take the prisoner to a doctor for examination. Only he is allowed to check the inmate's orifices. Guards regularly move inmates to other cells. This reduces the risk of smuggling.
Trenutno u ovoj sobi nismo pronašli. We haven't found any illegal things in this room yet. But we still suspect that something is hidden in here. That's why we're bringing in the colleague with the drug sniffing dog. The drug sniffing dog is always ready. Nothing escapes his nose. The detainee is permanently present during the search. This way, in retrospect, he cannot claim that guards planted something on him. We didn't find any banned substances or banned items in this cell. The inmate can go back in and make himself comfortable. Well, at least until the next cell search. And it can come at any time. Time and again, guards find illegal objects in the cells. The rule is, confiscate everything that is suspicious. The level of creativity among the inmates is high. But Croatia's toughest prison has a way to deal with that. Those found in possession of illicit items receive harsh punishments, solitary confinement, complete isolation, and the loss of all rights. And not just for a few hours, sometimes for many months. Six p.m. at Lepoglava. Night is falling. When it's dark, specially trained dogs are employed to maintain control over some 500 of the most dangerous men in the country. The dogs are a kind of night watchman. We place them between the inner and outer prison walls. They keep watch and bark. That way they signal the police on night watch as soon as something is not quite right. I feel sorry for any inmate who tries to flee. He doesn't stand a chance. He's finished right away. Compassion for the inmate is non-existent. The dogs are trained to snatch anything and anyone that crosses their path. Potential injuries to inmates during escape attempts are accepted as punishment by the prison in Lepoglava. After 12 hours, Shoko Kushter's shift comes to an end. Now, it's up to the colleagues on night watch to maintain discipline and order in Lepoglava prison. Peter Stojankovic, senior supervisor of criminal investigation, takes over. Hi. Nothing special happened today. Everything was fine. All right. See you then. The nights in the prison are comparatively quiet, and the guards are still outnumbered. They have to be ready and alert at all times in order to deal with critical situations quickly.
There are more things to do during the day, of course. But that doesn't mean we police officers can relax at night. It's quieter, but we still have to keep control of the prisoners inside their cells. The night roll call is coming up. To your cells, to your places. At 11 p.m., every single prisoner must be in his cell. No one is allowed outside anymore. Officers then turn off the lights. They alone decide when inmates have lighting in their cells and when they don't. The prisoners remain in the dark under lock and key until 6 o'clock the next morning. My family is not afraid for me, but they're not overjoyed that I work here either. They've gotten used to it. I used to work directly for the police. Now I work for the prison. They know what to expect. That's why they're happy when I come home from work every day. The officers follow a strict protocol at night. Once all inmates are in their cells, officers inspect the situation around the main building. We do a lot of inspection rounds. We check the outside of the building, the windows and the bars. We need to see if everything is in place and try to notice anything unusual. It's a very standard inspection. If the guards notice something suspicious, they call for assistance. While help is on the way, the guards rely on the well-trained dogs. If someone escapes, the dogs will attack him. It will end badly for the prisoner. Since the year 2000, there have only been two escape attempts over the wall. Both times, the police caught the inmate within minutes. Since these incidents, the prison has tightened its surveillance measures. The prison in Lepoglava is the most closely guarded prison in all of Croatia. The colleagues and I, we do our job as well and as professionally as possible. The prisoners who come to us here in Lepoglava are among the most dangerous criminals in the country. That's the reason why this prison is one of the most heavily guarded institutions. Only after wake-up call at 6 o'clock in the morning do the officers turn on the lights in the cells again. Until then, hopefully, everything will have remained peaceful in the prison. Early morning in Lepoglava. To quickly resolve dicey situations among inmates or attacks on officers, a special forces unit is at the ready. The group trains daily for emergencies. It's absolutely dangerous. Things can always escalate. Sharp objects are often found in the cells. Detainees could be armed, or we could have missed something. You never know what is going to happen. Okay, guys, let's get dressed, and then we'll start the simulation exercise. Let's go. 
Groups of four people make up a special unit. The constellation is always the same. Their every move is planned down to the last detail. It is the only way to prevent mistakes. During the training session, police colleague Shelko Kushta takes on the role of the aggressive prisoner. Then everything happens very quickly. Within seconds, the special unit overpowers the problem detainee. The inmate has no chance. The guys are a well-rehearsed team. Any attempt to resist the unit is useless. The aggressive inmate is then put in solitary confinement and loses all privileges until further notice. Visiting day at Lepoglava. Every Sunday, family members are allowed to come to the prison. Prior notice is mandatory. Visitors are not allowed to take anything into the room. This is purely a precautionary measure. It's the guard's task to prevent family members from smuggling in weapons, drugs, or cell phones. Igor's parents try to visit him several times a month. He has been in prison for 19 years for drug abuse and gang crime. Igor still has eight years to go. It makes me happy that they come to see me, but I'm also sad that they have to go through this because of me. It's almost like they're in prison too, all because of me. All that remains for the family is a little bit of hope of better times. It's difficult. We help him as much as we can. We stand by him. But he made a mistake. And that's why he has to be here. He has to serve his sentence. I hope one day we'll see him walk out of here. Almost every week, Igor's parents make the one-hour drive to Lepoglava just to be able to see their son for a maximum of two hours. Until the next visit, Igor is left with only his daily monotonous routine. Work, eat, sleep, kill time. It has to be like this. It's hard, but I've already gotten used to it. I've been here for 19 years. Sometimes I find it easier than my parents do. I enjoy the short time I get to spend with them. Igor does not know when he will see his parents again. For the prisoners in Lepoglava, every new day means a new struggle. For the officials, the tensions never ease. You have to be focused at all times. You never know what's going to happen. The most hardened criminals from all over Croatia are here. 
Croatia's oldest and toughest prison. Anyone who ends up here relinquishes all rights and is 100% controlled by others. Many prisoners dream of a second chance. My greatest desire is to come out of here a better person. When I'm out, I want to dedicate myself to work that inspires me, work that gives me courage and hope. I also want to have children. These are the best things I could ever ask for. Hope is the only thing that keeps these men going. There are no guarantees. You can always get into a situation that puts you in here. I can't say I'll never end up in jail again. It only takes the slightest mistake, and I'm back here. To be released from one of the toughest prisons in the world, and back home again. That's what the men here in Lepoglava prison strive for, to experience the one thing they have long and painfully missed, freedom. A different world with its own rules. Absolutely no privacy here. Zero tolerance. Prisoners remain in isolation for one week to a month. All this behind bars. Gangs. Violence. Drugs. Harassment. A daily survival of the fittest. In the toughest prisons in the world. Taichung, a mega metropolis in the west of Taiwan. The small island state is considered one of the safest countries in the world. Nevertheless, more people are behind bars here than in much larger countries, such as Germany, Spain, or Italy. The reason? Drugs. Huge quantities of drugs enter the country every year via the country's ports. In 2022 alone, police confiscated some 10 tons of heroin, cocaine, and amphetamines. The Chinese drug mafia uses the island state for transit. Anyone caught with drugs ends up here, in Taichung prison. It's a high security bunker with space for nearly 5,000 criminals. Escape from here is impossible. Monotony, confinement, and around-the-clock video surveillance everywhere dictate the lives of the inmates. Tai Chung Prison is one of the world's toughest prisons. Seven o'clock in the morning is when the head guard, Li Shi Chang, begins his shift. He has been providing security in Taiwan's largest prison for 30 years. As every morning, I hope that today will be a quiet day. And I hope that there will be no problems and no security incidents. After all, the country's most dangerous criminals are imprisoned here. Over a hundred life sentences alone, and more than a thousand prisoners are serving sentences of 20 years or more. The security measures are particularly tight. 
This is now the second security check. This consists of a passage detector, which spots weapons, metal, and cell phones, as well as a further check by security officers. Only those who are absolutely clean are allowed into the prison. The guards work in three shifts. During the day shift, 210 guards are responsible for the current 4,500 prisoners. Attention! Roll call! The guards are now deployed to the various cell blocks. The prison has a total of six cell blocks. Each block is a small prison of its own, which the inmates hardly ever leave. In Unit Chao, there are almost 500 prisoners taking part in special rehabilitation programs. Next to it, Unit I, the largest block in the mega prison with 1,100 inmates. And Unit Yi, for prisoners with medium to long sentences. Unit Xing is a block where mainly drug criminals are held. The prison's isolation wing is also located here. Unit Ren, with 1,000 prisoners, the second largest block. Unit Chung, a block exclusively for HIV-infected prisoners. Next to it is the prison hospital. At the other end of the 200,000 square meter mega prison is the kitchen. 15,000 meals are prepared here daily. Everyday life in Taiwan's toughest prison is strictly timed. Unit Xing is the drug wing. 715 sharp. The prisoners are given their breakfast. Soy milk and rice rolls. A nutritious and above all, an expensive meal. Food is eaten in the cell, on the floor. There is no table. Eight prisoners are housed here in just under 20 square meters. One of them is Huang, prisoner 5523, sentenced to 11 years for amphetamine trafficking. You get used to cramped conditions. Sometimes the cells are even more crowded. Then it gets really uncomfortable, but it's okay as it is now. On average, each prisoner has just two square meters of space. There are beds only for those at the top of the cell hierarchy. The rest have to sleep on mats on the floor. Even with windows and a fan, the air in the cells is stifling and stuffy. I hope to get out early. I'll find out next month. After breakfast, cleaning is compulsory. This is to prevent pests and diseases from spreading among the prisoners. The cell's toilet also serves as a sink, shower, and bathroom for the men. Huang and his cellmates stock up on water. This is because the water is turned on only twice a day for two hours. At the beginning, it's extremely difficult to learn the ropes. You have to adapt. That took a long time for me. I compare life here to that of a soldier. It's a bit like the military. You just work. But the worst thing is, is that you have no privacy. Not only are the prisoners in close quarters with their cellmates around the clock, but they're also permanently exposed to the watchful eye of the guards. Each cell is under constant camera surveillance. There is no place here where you are not observed. That is sometimes very difficult, especially when I'm in a bad mood or sad. Writing helps me. I write letters to my family, my brother, and my girlfriend too. The orange vest means Huang is cell boss. This helps him to earn the guard's favor, but it doesn't make him any friends. Nearly half of all prisoners here have been convicted of drug trafficking or possession. This also affects the work of head guard Li Shi Zheng. 
In contrast to the past, the prisoners have changed. They're more educated and intelligent and behave accordingly. But that doesn't make them harmless. They're still criminals, but in a different way, rather sneaky. For the guards, this means always being vigilant. There are no special events planned for today. Please take good care of yourself, make sure you have your baton with you, and don't hesitate to use it in an emergency. Everything all right? Have a good day. The 600 prisoners in the block are about to go to work. Tension among the guards is rising. The most dangerous moment is now, when the prisoners go to work. We all have to be in position and remain vigilant. The prisoners have a lot of time to think during the night. You never know what they'll be like in the morning. It's always possible that someone will suddenly become mentally unstable and flip out. That's why we have to be particularly vigilant now. So there's no incident when the cells are all open. To keep the situation under control, the guards let the prisoners out of the cells one by one, and only in small groups. Each of the prison's six blocks is designed in such a way that prisoners do not have to leave it. The workplaces, known as factories, are located within the blocks. Work is compulsory for everyone in Taichung prison. Gluing bags and plugging cables is supposed to give the prisoners a daily structure and prepare them for a regular life after prison. They are paid just $30 a month. When the prisoners work in the factories, we rarely have problems. The inmates usually behave well, especially towards me. After all, I'm the one who makes sure they're doing well. I help them if they have problems. However, they need to behave respectfully. If they don't, they face the consequences. The prison works with what is known as progressive correctional treatment. This means that prisoners are divided into four levels. The better a prisoner behaves, the higher their level. And this determines, for example, how many packs of cigarettes a prisoner can buy and how often he is allowed to have visitors. The most important thing, however, is that the length of imprisonment is reduced with each level obtained. For most prisoners, this is a good reason to cause as little trouble as possible. The laws in Taiwan are strict. There are no exceptions. Prisoner 1971 also had to learn this. He used to be a high-ranking military officer. Now he is serving five years in prison. How you fare here always depends on your performance and on yourself. I just hope that I can spend time with my family again soon. I'm already 70 years old and my wife is also in her 60s. I long to be by her side again. I want to travel with my wife as soon as possible. He doesn't want to talk about why he is here. He doesn't want to give his name either. He is too ashamed for being in prison. At the beginning, I was terrified of prison. I had imagined it would be much worse. When I arrived here, it wasn't like what I thought. There was nothing bad, no abuse or anything. You're just locked up. He still has around three years to go before he, with good guidance, can be with his family again. Those who behave impeccably can apply for a place in Unit Chao. Instead of doing dull and monotonous work, prisoners here take part in art programs. One of them is 53-year-old Lai. He used to have his own nightclub, 
He also dealt drugs there until the police caught him and arrested him. He has been in Taichung prison for nine years, but previously did time in another prison. I've always loved painting, and then I took the chance and applied for this program. And since I have a talent for it, they took me on. I like being here in the workshop. I enjoy it, and I worked hard for the entrance test. For him, working in the art workshop is a kind of escape from harsh reality. When I paint, I can forget. It's very liberating. I dive into another world and forget where I am at the moment. Prisoners are in the workshop from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Here, too, everything is designed so that they don't have to leave the room for anything. Laundry, toilets, showers, everything is done on site. Under the watchful eye of the cameras and guards, of course, they aim to identify problems before a situation has a chance to escalate. A good relationship with the prisoners is important to us. We try to get to know them as well as possible and understand how they think, how they feel. That way we can better recognize when something is wrong or something is bothering them. Each month, we also have one-to-one -one meetings with them. There, they can tell us everything they don't want others to hear. Like informing on other inmates and thereby earn points. But these preventive measures don't always help. In 2015, there was a hostage situation in another Taiwanese prison that ended in six deaths. Since then, guards have been even more cautious here, too. Each of us has a baton on our person. We use it to protect ourselves, and if a person behaves violently, we also have pepper spray. In an emergency, there's also an alarm button at the back. We set off the alarm and go outside and lock the door behind us. Anyone who causes trouble ends up here, in the isolation wing. This is one of the isolation cells. Depending on what the prisoners have done, they stay here for between a week and one month. One window, one toilet, and otherwise bare, tiled walls. That's what awaits all troublemakers in prison. And of course, the cells here are also under round-the-clock camera surveillance. As you can see up there, we give the prisoners tasks to do during their time in isolation. They are given books to read. That calms them down. They can sit down or lie down and read. It's a very effective treatment. Most prisoners only end up here once. Meanwhile, the prison kitchen is working at full speed to feed the four and a half thousand inmates. There is even an in-house bakery. Jobs here are in high demand. Here, prisoners receive up to 300 euros a month, 10 times as much as the factory workers. Inmate Huang has been working in the bakery for four years and has now worked his way up to foreman. I make sure everyone is working properly. We have a set number of baked goods we need to meet every day. If my instructions are not followed, I go to our supervisor and he takes care of it. It's my job to check on the others. But if I happen to miss something, someone else sees it, they tell me. And then I report it. That's how the system works here. From drug dealer to informer for the guards, it's a life Huang would never have dreamt of in the past. So, basically, I used to do jobs for the Mafia all the time. It wasn't difficult to get in, but I didn't do anything bad. I didn't kill anyone or anything like that. 
It was more along the lines of collecting debts or protection money. You know, I was young and I hung out with them. I drove their cars and stuff. But Huang has now said goodbye to his old life, or so he claims. I'm not really worried about slipping back into the scene. It's the first time I've ended up in prison and they've locked me up for such a long time. I've come to appreciate the value of freedom. I definitely don't want to end up here again. He is currently waiting for the decision on whether he will be released early for good behavior. The chances are 50-50. One floor below, in the kitchen, lunch is being prepared. Every day, 15,000 meals are prepared here from 1.7 tons of food. The processes in the large kitchen are strictly regulated. Every meal has to taste exactly the same. Otherwise, it would quickly lead to disputes among the prisoners. The prison spends around $2 per inmate per day on food. The meals are kept fairly simple. The coveted kitchen jobs are only available to those who are not serving time for a violent crime and who have done absolutely nothing wrong in prison. We're in a prison and these knives present a big risk. We keep them in a separate room so that no other prisoners are around when we open the cupboard. Otherwise, someone could try to take one of the knives and attack other inmates with it. To prevent such situations, prisoners are not allowed to bring the knives to the workstations themselves. This task is always carried out by one of the guards. The system has been successful. There has yet to be a safety incident in the kitchen here. Just before 12, lunch is ready. The workers now deliver it to the various blocks. There are no dining halls. The prisoners eat at their workstations, as to Lai and the others in the art workshop. Nobody has to go hungry here. However, the question of taste elicits a collective laugh. <laughs> we have no choice. We have to eat what we're given. If I could choose, I'd like a burger, fried chicken, or something else Western. <laughs> no wonder, after more than 10 years in prison. The other prisoners seem to view things similarly. Almost half of the food is left over. If you're lucky, you have friends or relatives nearby who regularly bring food from outside. Relatives are allowed to drop off two kilograms of food per day at the visitor center. Many families take advantage of this opportunity. On average, a further 800 kilograms of food are collected every day. Time and again, however, friends or family try to smuggle illegal items into prison this way. Before the food reaches the prisoners, then Eun Sen and his colleagues search it thoroughly. We look for prohibited items, such as drugs, metal objects, really anything made of metal, including keys or lighters. All types of powder are also particularly suspicious, as these are usually drugs. Cakes or rolls are particularly suitable for hiding things in. Today, for example, I found this one pill in a cookie. We confiscated it immediately, of course. We still have to find out exactly what it is. Every fine means trouble both for the prisoner and the person who delivered the parcel. 
Everyone who drops something off must leave their address, telephone number and name, so we know exactly who has dropped off the items. If we find something somewhere, the person will be held accountable. This is a serious offence. In the worst case scenario, this also means prison. Officers then send the controlled food to the prisoners. Prisoners who have no family or friends nearby can buy supplies in the prison store. Here they can order almost anything, from toiletries, fruit, and writing materials, to ready-made meals and sweets. In here, everyone has to buy their own things. If someone has no money at all, they can apply for support. But many people are too ashamed to even do that. A pack of toilet paper costs 50 cents. Toothpaste, one dollar. A pack of apples, on the other hand, costs seven dollars. Most people, therefore, limit themselves to the bare essentials. Lai is one of the lucky ones who can order regularly from the store. My family sent me money. My family sends me a fixed amount of 5,000 yuan every month. And I can use the 5,000 yuan for my daily needs. Sometimes I also save for more expensive things. It amounts to the equivalent of $150. It's a lot of money in prison. That's why Lai often orders things for his cellmates, like toothpaste. Early afternoon, head guard Li Shi Zhang is on patrol in his block. He makes the rounds twice a day, always at different times. The inmates should never be sure of their fate. The count comes to 104 prisoners. We count the prisoners several times a day. This is very important so that we can keep an overview. That way we can see immediately if someone is missing and we can then react quickly. And to deal with an escape attempt within the prison walls, if possible. Li Shi Chang seizes the moment for another inspection. The prisoner's cigarettes are locked away in a cupboard and are only handed out on request. Sometimes the prisoners take the boxes and hide things in them. For example, lighters, blades, or medication. This time, he found nothing. The head guard is satisfied. Everything is in order here. At least for the moment. The next inspection round will follow in two hours. The prison mainly relies on cameras to monitor the inmates. Over a thousand of them are distributed around the grounds, in the factories, and in the cells. The guards can access all cameras from the monitoring center. Tong Shao is the prison's head of security. 
We can see all areas of the prison from here, every camera. We have extra screens for particularly vulnerable areas. Our main task is to use video surveillance to identify unusual situations. If we notice something suspicious, we immediately send the people there to deal with it. The same applies here. Recognize situations and defuse them before disaster strikes. We have a mixture of video surveillance, surveillance by the guards, and fairly thick walls and bars. It's almost insurmountable. The prisoners see all this and realize that escape is actually pointless, and at the latest, it becomes very clear once they're standing in front of the outer wall. The prison wall is 1.2 kilometers long and surrounds the entire compound. In front of it is a massive wire fence and the five-meter-wide so-called no-man's land. If someone enters no-man's land, an alarm is immediately triggered. Should someone manage to bypass this alarm, the outer wall is waiting for them. It's seven meters high, with several rows of barbed wire fed with high-voltage current. So far, no one has managed to get to the other side. Late afternoon. Dinner is served at 4 p.m. It's the last meal of the day for the prisoners. After eating, they have to return to their cramped cells. The cell and the workshop here are actually two different worlds. In the cell, you can do practically nothing except rest and sleep. Here, on the other hand, there's plenty of space. We can be creative and even do sports. That's why none of the men are in a particular hurry. They take their time tidying up their things. Shortly before five, guard Huang collects the tools. When we hand out the knives, we count the blades. And when we return them, there have to be just as many as when we handed them out. If one of the blades is missing, we confront the prisoner. If he claims to not know where it is, we look for it until it turns up. And until then, no one leaves the room. 5 p.m. It's time for cell lockup. The prisoners are counted once again. To get prisoners safely back to their cells, Huang Chen Chen receives help from two colleagues. You can go outside. Guards randomly search some of the prisoners. After all, with a little creativity, there are lots of things in the art workshop that could easily be used to make a weapon. Passing through the corridors of the block towards the cells. Why and the other prisoners have not been out in the open for a minute today? and they won't be able to either. They will spend the next 15 hours in their cells. Lai shares an eight square meter cell with three other prisoners. Just enough space for the toilet and for the men to lie down. A tiny television and a few books are the only distraction from harsh reality. In the beginning, I thought a lot about my old life outside and about my family. 
I brooded about my future. I've been here for nine years now, and I've stopped thinking too much. Otherwise, I just go crazy. As long as I don't think about it, it's bearable. Prison changes you. I've learned how to behave in here. Every minute of the day. His most valuable possession is a photo album with pictures of family and friends. And a photo of himself from before prison is a kind of reminder of how things used to be. Actually, I only have good ratings from the wardens, and I've now been promoted to level two. That means I'm allowed to have visitors at least twice a week. Once a month, my little brother brings our mother here. She's old now, otherwise I get a lot of visits from friends. His greatest wish is to get out of here while his mother is still alive. Attention. Ten fifty six. Here. Fifty one sixty one. Here. Twenty sixty. Here. Twenty forty one. Here. The guards check once again to make sure every prisoner is really in his cell. Then it's time for Wang Chen Shen and his colleagues to call it a day. The night shift takes over. Silence returns to Taiwan's toughest prison. A few kilometers further into the city, however, nightlife is just getting started. This is exactly where many of the prisoners used to sell their drugs. While people celebrate in the streets of Taichung, the prison seems deserted. Lai has been in prison the longest and therefore has the privilege of one of the two beds. It's his own little kingdom. The newcomers, on the other hand, have to sleep on the floor. Time passes very slowly in the cell. We try to distract ourselves by reading and watching TV. It's a distraction from the thoughts of what his life would be like now if the police hadn't caught him. I really don't sleep very well here, but I'm used to it. The guards count the prisoners one last time for the day. The lights are switched off at 9 p.m., at least some of them. It is never completely dark in the cells. The inmates have to sleep with the lights on. The reason? The surveillance cameras. In the monitoring center, special concentration is required during the night. This is when the risk of an escape is at its highest. Three guards keep an eye on the screens at the same time. However, head of security, Tong Shao, does not rely entirely on technology. He personally checks the situation in each block several times a night. Everything's fine, sir. Nothing unusual. Any incidents? No. Now, after 10 p.m., it's bedtime. The prisoners are no longer allowed to walk around, watch TV, or read. As you can see, on the monitors, 
Most people are already asleep. We make sure that everything is really quiet, people aren't moving around too much. If we do notice anything, our colleagues immediately go to the cell in question to sort it out and restore the calm. For the prisoners, this means total surveillance, even while they sleep. Tong walks from block to block. His tour lasts half an hour. Everything is fine, nothing out of the ordinary. But you can never assume it will stay that way. That's why I'm doing another round in a few hours to make sure there are no incidents. For this night at least, it stays that way. A few days later, today is a special day for inmate Lai and the others from his work group. The weekly yard walk is about to begin. Today, they will be out in the open for the first time in a week and feel the sun on their skin. But first, it's off to the workshop. Lai is simply happy to be out of his cell. It feels good to be out here. I'm immediately in a much better mood, simply because I can be in a different space. I'm almost, how shall I put it, cheerful. The mere thought of going outside lifts the spirits of all the prisoners. After lunch, they finally get to go out into the yard. Once a week, each working group is allowed a yard walk. This means that exactly once a week, they have the opportunity to be out in the open air and feel the warmth of the sun's rays. Most of them use the time to at least briefly exercise under the watchful eyes of the guards and, of course, the cameras. Security Chief Tong Shao takes advantage of the prisoner's absence to conduct a cell search. We are mainly looking for objects that could compromise or endanger our safety. For example, homemade weapons with which the prisoners could injure themselves, other prisoners, or us. The guards search several cells every day. They're only selected shortly beforehand. That way, no guard can warn the inmates. Please check your equipment. You can start now. The guards are searching a total of 10 cells today. There are no taboos. Every corner of the cell is thoroughly searched. After all, the safety of the guards is also at stake. Some of the prisoners take toothbrushes, for example, and sharpen them. This turns them into a dangerous weapon, and that's exactly the kind of thing we expect to find today. Our main goal is to find these things to ensure everyone's safety. In addition to homemade weapons, they also search for medicines, drugs, cigarettes, and cell phones. To do this, they also look in rather unsavory places. I have to think from the prisoner's perspective. It's not easy to say where I would hide my things if I were locked up in here. I think I would use the toilet area. Some of them might think that this area is too disgusting and that we might not look too hard there. But these are the exact places we need to look extra hard. This time, the search turns up empty. The bathroom is clean, but his colleague does discover something, aluminum foil. This doesn't belong in a cell. 
even if aluminum foil looks harmless, with the foil and a battery, you could easily start a fire. After half an hour, the search is over. Please finish up. Take all the found items to the main room. The hall is not exactly large. In addition to the aluminum foil, the guards also found a rubber band, a wooden board, and batteries. There was no trace of homemade weapons. There are very few prohibited items found in this prison. That's because we do these searches every day. Today, it was relatively boring, but this boring job is our only way of ensuring security and order in our prison. The owners of the items will be dealt with later. They will be downgraded in the rating system. Meanwhile, the prisoners enjoy the rare opportunity to take part in sport activities in the open air. I enjoy being out in the sun, running, doing sport, sweating, sweating a lot. I can totally relax in the process. And every time he does, he realizes how prison has changed his life. I didn't used to think about what I was doing. I was young and I didn't really care about anything. I had no sense of responsibility towards my family. When I went to prison, that all changed. I was pretty shocked. I've changed a lot over the course of my time here. I've become a different person, so to speak. After just 40 minutes, the time in the yard is over. It's back to the workshop. Lai's life will look like this for at least another two years. Only then will he have the opportunity to be released on parole early. My plan is to hold an exhibition while I'm still in prison so that people can get to know me and I can open my own small studio later on. For the last two years, I've been working on paintings that are suitable for an exhibition, paintings that I would like to exhibit later in my own studio. I'm trying to prepare myself as well as possible for the future. His chances of making his dream come true are not all bad. He has already won several prizes with his paintings. And Huang already has plans for the time after prison. I do think I have a good chance of finding my way again once I'm out of here. I've been working here for more than four years and I've gained a lot of experience. I've learned many different things here. My plan is to open my own small bakery at home and then market my products online. With a bit of luck, he will be allowed out in just a few months. While inmates dream of a life of freedom, Head of security Tom would not trade his job for anything. He wants to run a prison himself one day. Until then, he will continue to provide security in Taichung Prison, one of the world's toughest prisons. <laughs>